We're here at Blockchain Money again, it's the second day in London, and I'm joined by a Professor, Professor Amitrano from the Polytechnic de Milano. Uh, professor, I wonder if you could just give us a brief introduction of how you got into Bitcoin blockchain technologies and how you go about teaching it. Yeah, I mean, I discovered Bitcoin in 2014. I was taking, uh, I was paying attention to the fintech sector and I noticed many Bitcoin startups, I wanted to understand that. I was at a conference in Berlin and that was a revelatory moment because I got back from that conference saying, wow, if this really works, I want to make it my full-time job. And in a way, here I am because I currently teach Bitcoin and blockchain technologies at the Polytechnic de Milano and I'm very, very excited about the impact that the invention of digital gold, which Bitcoin is, might have on the history of civilization, money and finance. Because if you think about the impact that physical gold had on civilization, money and finance, I mean, to have a replica in the digital realm will be quite exciting. And why teaching? Well, because I think there is a lot of uh, misunderstanding going on. You know, I, I must confess that the old blockchain hype, um, I don't understand that. So then to interrupt, you, you definitely see a difference between blockchain and maybe Bitcoin. You, you, you remember Bitcoin was the blockchain and now people are talking about blockchain distributed ledger technology and they're trying to separate the two away from Bitcoin. So maybe without the digital asset. Anyway, I'll let you... Explain. Yeah, no, well, th this is the point that uh, you were pointing at. Like, um, I do understand having many blockchain. I don't think that Bitcoin will be the only one. But blockchain without native digital asset, to me, that is nonsense. I mean, if you don't have uh, a currency, a coin, which has some value to reward miner for distributed consensus, and then you have to appoint validators for transaction. Why should you use a blockchain, which is a subpar data structure, up and only, very convoluted, made to be immutable, while you can have, since you're trusting your uh, appointed validators, you can just use database technology, and it will be perfectly fine. So, well, I do, I do realize that people are progressively understanding uh, the ability to enhance the current database technology with cryptographic technique, what I call database on cryptographic steroids. But there are still databases. Of course, to say that you have a startup which is working on databases is not cool enough to get money, and so you prefer to say it's blockchain. <laughs> It's completely different when we're talking about Ethereum or Bitcoin or Zcash or Monero, which are blockchains with a native digital asset, which can be used to reward agents in the system which are providing some real, real distributed uh, service, in a way. Uh, may I ask, when you're teaching, do you uh, distinguish between Bitcoin and Ethereum, or do you kind of see, well, they have an asset, so therefore I think they're equal parts, or, or are you a Bitcoin man through and through? Well, people say that I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, uh, which is not true, by the way. Uh, I look at alternative coins as a worthwhile experiment. You know, I'm, I'm with Frederick von Hayek. You know, Frederick von Hayek, the Nobel Economic Prize, he was looking toward uh, an era where uh, private money will compete on the market in order to have you know, market competition, uh, which will be establishing the most relevant, most beneficial, most performant money that we want to use. So this is happening in the crypto space, and this is just fantastic. Now, if you ask me what I think will prevail, I see Bitcoin having a, a huge advantage and I have some concerns about, you know, the global computer idea of Turing completeness of Ethereum. But I might be wrong, and I will be happy just for the world, you know, to test and assess respective uh, um, weaknesses and strength of different alternative solutions. Uh, the key point is that we can finally rebel against the monopoly of money, which the government and the uh, power had always been abusing in history, might not be the case in the last 20 years in Europe and US maybe, nonetheless, we are at the moment in time where with negative interest rate, we are facing probably the end of a, a, a phase in uh, 
fiat currency monetary policy. I mean, I see negative interest rate as a failure of the current governance model. And so this is the right time in history to have private alternatives, private money, which might be competing with governative or fiat so-called money. And, and as you say, the more competition then one assumes there will be more strength in the overall winner. Definitely. I mean, uh, you could see Bitcoin as the first experiment which will be surpassed or might be surpassed by more mature platforms. Or you could see those platforms coming after Bitcoin about uh, experiments which will provide some feedback for the evolution of Bitcoin platform. I mean, this is the market and this is what is good about the market. Competition, providing new feature and uh, so it's not like, you know, being pro something or against something. I'm all in favor of Ayak uh, dream of competing private money and now if you ask me I have my own idea on which private money might be better suited to answer to the, the needs of the current economic situation but that is my opinion the fact which is good is that there is competition and on that note I'm gonna say you've just become my favorite professor of all time thank you very <laughs> much for your time thank, thank you, you very you're much. very Cheers. kind thank you